Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weather Channel and welcome to your Saturday video. Well I'm away at the moment but um, you're, you're seeing a, a re-recorded one. So um, we'll get straight on with things. We'll have a look at the CFS today. Um, I did mention this in yesterday's video, yesterday's video, um, but we'll we're looking at it again today just to see if we're seeing any responses to, with regards to the stratospheric data that we have been seeing. With this sudden stratospheric warming in the forecast, then we of course expect some changes in the longer term. And why not, what better way to illustrate that than with the CFS, the can't forecast snow model. So we'll have a look for everything at the um, for the next few weeks, um, taking us from, you know, the, the, the start time of the 28th of Feb through to around the the middle of April. So as you can see, we've got low, a lot of low pressure in the Atlantic. This is from the middle of March. Um, very mild southwesterly winds for a time. Lots of low pressure. This would be a named storm if that came off. Very stormy, very Atlantic driven. High pressure towards the end of the month, 23rd, 24th my mark, of March. Um, building right off the top of the country. Pretty mild, um, I'd say. Pretty mild, high and dry. And pr feeling pretty good. However... This is the time when we could get a stratospheric response, and I'll show you the strat data in a minute um, after this. Oh, the latest data, I should say. So we've got high pressure retreating in the Atlantic, um, ridging up towards Greenland. Proper block. Um, not much low pressure to break it down. We've got low pressure over Scandinavia, beginning to drag in the wind from a bitterly cold, well, not bitterly cold, but a cold northerly direction, and by the 30th of March... Get your Aprils on. Oh, let's have a nice April. Look at March. Look at the end of March. Look at that. Bitterly cold air is sinking southwards right from an Arctic source. The minus five lines clear in the country. You can see there, that line there is a weather front, which is the boundary between the milder air and the colder air sinking southwards. This low looks like it's going to go through the centre of the country. Could even bring a little bit of snow. I mean, look at that. There's some cold air masses wrapped in. It's in within cold air. That would be an absolute snowmaker on the 31st of March. By the 1st of April, we're still in cold air, so all of this could still be snow. Could be an absolute blizzard on the um, 31st. 31st of March into the 1st of April this year, if this came off. Again, experimental model, but we're just looking at signs for the next couple of weeks to see if there will be a response. Now, not always there is a response when we get a strat data, and uh, when we get a stratospheric warming. If it comes off, again, there's still some uncertainty about it, um, if it comes off, because um, it doesn't always guarantee cold weather or blocking or anything like that, and it can all fall apart and we be on the wild side of the ridge, as I said before. But we had again tentative signs, it's showing this a few times. Now as you can see through the rest of April, it actually is quite cool and quite cold. We've repeated north north easterly shots. Look at that, the 10th of April. The minus 10 ice firm into e on along the east coast of uh, of England there. Probably bringing in more snow showers around the 10th and 11th of April. Again, as we go through it, March into April, less cold air. And it's very marginal, even with minus 5 ice firm, to see cold air. But with this, you could still see some winter, and especially in the north. Not exclusively, however. It depends on the exact time of day. So if it's more likely to settle and... Um, not, not more likely to settle, probably won't settle at all. But it's more likely to fall overnight um, as snow. Because, again, daylight hours are longer and... Um, the air masses aren't as chilly as they are in January and February, but they still can be pretty potent and feel quite cold. But the daytime temperatures will not be limited as much, so they'll still probably be above 6 degrees in the south. Further northwards, though, could still be quite chilly. Now, as we move along through the month, it does turn milder at times, but again, repeated lovely shots continue. Um, at times, keeps the keeps the high pressure to our west, though. Look at that on the 1st of May. Another Normally plunge again the minus five line in again so that could be more snow and again on the 5th of may more snow possibly in the north probably not probably cold rain but cold air masses around a lot of the time it looks a pretty disappointing may if that came off and again 16th of may another cold shot from the north again getting less and less potent because you know may and look you can see the the um the warmth towards africa building up you can tell that the seasons are changing as we go through but it's um it's pretty interesting to look at remember to like and subscribe if you do enjoy the channel uh, we'll move on to the ecmwf next which is the um, zonal mean winds for the strap data remember at the, with the current data that I've got no, from uh, Friday night the chance of a strap's very warming from the GEFS ensemble so the GFS and it's 32 model runs is currently 74% which is a slight decrease from 83% at its peak but again it's not too bad it's still favouring an SSW now this is the 
ECMWF mean zonal winds uh, for the next couple of weeks. This is the point where we're looking at sudden stratospheric warming occurring. And as you can see, the zero degree line's there. And the runs are just about getting to a reversal level. Still a lot of scattering there, though. And it doesn't look as strong as yesterday. Still some uncertainty. There must be some little features gathering, gathering pace, um, which is throwing it off a little bit from showing up as much in the models. Once we iron that out, though, we can safely say a SSW is likely. But yeah, big a big split. There's still a lot of very, very, um, very negative, um, very weakening um, stratospheric response winds here, trade winds, which are just very low. Um, <laughs> there definitely would be sudden stratospheric warmings. If it came off like this, and we saw just around the zero, it would be technically a SSW, but it wouldn't last for very long. It'd be like last year when we had like three SSWs, but they were very short-lived and we didn't really have an, an impact at the surface. It's one of those things. We'll keep you posted. We'll keep, we'll keep on monitoring it, as always, because, you know, that's who we are. If we have a look at the, um, at the GFS ensembles, you can see it does say 74%. Um, which is all right, it's a decent chance, of course, but there are more runs, as you can see here, um, compared to earlier this morning, this is the GFS ones, there are more runs which are recovering the um, polar vortex, or not even reversing zonal winds and causing an SSW, but, yep, yeah, again, something to monitor over the next coming weeks and days and weeks and months and years, and oh, sh so, yeah, that's it for me today. Little short video for you all while I'm away. Hope you, if you did enjoy today's video, though, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Really do appreciate all your support, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone.